new Pew poll is breaking down support of Senators Warren and Sanders along demographic lines. And Bernie's new criminal justice plan includes a ban on for-profit prisons, a prisoner bill of rights, and a reduction of incarceration rates by half. Team Rising is here to talk about all that and more. Kanisha Grant is an assistant professor of political science at Howard University and author of The Great Migration and the Democratic Party. Marissa Martinez is a Republican strategist. She previously served as political director, director for Governor Charlie Baker's re-election campaign. Welcome to you both. Ladies, happy Thank Monday. You. So we have a very interesting new Pew Research Center poll. They dug into a lot of Democratic preferences. What we see is that, you know, predictably that uh, Joe Biden is the first choice amongst these candidates. But what I liked about this poll is that it broke it down by gender and by race. So we see that black support for Joe Biden, you know, as, as, as predicted, is, is very strong. But we also see, and this is what I think is the most notable number in this entire thing, is the 4% black voter support for Elizabeth Warren. And there's, Kanisha, we talk about here all the time, you cannot win the Democratic Party without black support. You just cannot win the primary. It's impossible. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I'm interested to know who they talk to in the poll, okay. like I always am. Yes. Yeah. You're all familiar yeah. with that. Of course. But I think what's really interesting is that 45% of people who are black and not sure about mm -hmm. their That's right. There's candidate. a 45% number, which is huge yeah. about that, that they're not support. Most yeah. of the people who I talk to, especially black women, are very excited about Warren mm -hmm. without prompting. Yeah. Just who are you looking at? Warren is the answer I get back very often, as often as I hear folks talking about Joe Biden. And so I'd be interested to know what the race and gender to break down might be because yeah. most of the folks I'm talking to are black women and those black women are especially excited about women. Yeah, because she overall, they looked at, you know, all of the um, candidates' coalitions. She had the whitest coalition of any candidate, you know, whiter than Mayor Pete, who we talk often about how he struggles with black voters. And strikingly, on the opposite end of the spectrum, contrary to what sort of media assumptions typically are, Bernie Sanders had the most diverse coalition. He was basically 50-50 yeah. white and non-white split in his coalition. Yeah, so I mean, I think you bring up an excellent point with the coalition building. Um, in my opinion, you know, um, as someone who's worked on campaigns and has, you know, built quite a few coalitions, um, it still is, you know, a year and some change until, mm -hmm. the, until the election. So I think it's going to be an interesting dynamic to see, you know, if we're going to see educated African-American white Women, um, and where you know they tend to fall and vice versa. Right. Kanisha, yeah, what do you think the voters are weighing? I mean, with this large population of African American voters who are basically like, we're still looking. Yeah. What do you think are some of the things that are being weighed? I think uh, black voters are like other voters in the sense that they're worried about electability. Mm -hmm. And I think we keep getting these signals that Joe Biden is the only person who can win. And I think many people are uncomfortable with that kind of logic and trying to make the decision about whether or not that's true. And if it's true, then okay, we'll go that way. We'll do what we have to do because we support the Democratic Party in large numbers. But I think if we get any signal that Elizabeth Warren can do it or Kamala Harris can do it, then we're out. I, I think you're hmm. right. And, and that was, we talk about this here all the time, which is that President Obama was actually not polling higher in South Carolina right. prior to the Iowa caucuses. It's when he won Iowa that black voters in South Carolina were like, oh, this is like a, a thing. thing. This yeah. is real. Yeah, and then the flood that. of support. So, but we've talked about this here. I think that is much more of a problem because Joe Biden could lose South, uh, could lose Iowa and New Hampshire. He could still retain that support. I think that it's really much more somebody like Kamala Harris, where Iowa or New Hampshire is so much of a must win for her. She has to deliver either number one or number two to show South Carolina black voters that she is somebody who can compete, but I haven't seen her able to do that Right, yet. and just yeah. to jump off um, a big point that I yeah. noticed in this poll, about a quarter of those surveyed, you know, they didn't have a preference yet. Yeah. So that sure. means, you know, are they still persuadable? Right. Um, or, you know, are they just waiting for someone like Harris to make another big splash? Mm -hmm. We saw, um, you know, and I think it was the first debate, you know, Harris came out swinging, you know, she, you know, kind of brought it to Biden. And, um, you know, I'm curious to know if she's going to continue to make marks like that, which of course will improve her polling. Well, and Kanisha, I mean, what we've seen since that sort of breakout moment for Senator Harris, she had a jump in the poll and then her numbers have sort of steadily eroded at the same time that Warren's have risen and right. they have a very similar, I mean, actually a lot of white liberal women like both Kamala and Warren. And I think Elizabeth Warren has been the primary beneficiary of Kamala's decline. Yeah. I think you're right. I think that they are 
to be tr totally like transparent, the people I talk to want a Warren Harris ticket. <laughs> but they <laughs> don't believe it will ever happen. And so they are speaking to us in these terms like, I really like Harris, I li really like Warren, and depending on what day of the week it is and who I'm talking to, you get a different right. answer. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I'm looking yeah. at right now at the numbers on the postgraduate degree. Elizabeth Warren leading the field, no, uh, no surprise here, w of people with postgrad degrees and amongst college educated voters, roughly tied there with Joe Biden. But when you go to high school or less, that's where you see Biden and Bernie Sanders actually have pretty robust amount of support. And I think, Kanisha, it goes to that whole question about electability, which yeah. is that there's a mind in the Democratic voter of like, do we try and persuade people who came out for Trump in order to come back, these Obama, Obama, Trump voters, or is it better to just drive out our own political coalition and build a new one? What do you, what do you think about that particular theory? I'm really worried, yeah. actually, about it. I think that the Democrats right now are ten trending towards this you have to vote for Biden or you have to vote for the establishment candidate yeah. because that's the only person who can win. Mm -hmm. And we tried that in 2016 with Hillary Clinton. We're, We're not right. voting for Hillary Clinton or excited about her, her. We're voting against Donald Trump. And I think you gotta get people to vote for something to vote for. If you scare them, they might stay home. Yeah, I, I mean, Marissa, uh, Ryan Graham, who we have on sometimes journalists with The Intercept, makes this point that the one time that we're like, forget it, we're, we don't care about electability, we're going with our heart, and backed Obama, who was not supposed to be the most electable one, that's when we actually won. Right, right, and I think what's cool about this poll, and it's almost like a trend, you know, since Obama, is uh, good character mm -hmm. and uh, honesty. That's like the number one characteristic yeah, that this poll, vote. yeah, it's yeah. it's it's that big, you know, hunch into electability. What makes the candidate, mm -hmm. you know, someone that you trust, someone that has good character, and someone that, you know, they think is really going to be the next person to it's challenge funny. Donald I mean, Trump. This is the debate on both sides, which is that you have these, you know, the, the thesis after the 2012 when Mitt Romney lost, everyone was like, oh, we have to be the big tent GOP, and like that's, we have to win back all, all these people pandering to different minority groups. And Trump just came out and was like, no, he just drove out more white votes than any other candidate uh, had before, and that's how he, he won the Electoral College. And it just, this just goes to the same, I think, theory on the progressive side, which is, you know, we have all these people of color, we have all these working class people who may not have voted before, we should just drive them out. Let's get vote. them to the polls. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we also have this new interesting uh, Bernie Sanders criminal justice reform proposal uh, that has come out. He is advocating for a 50% cut in the prison population. Kanisha, this is something I've seen with interest. I've, I think it starts with Van Jones. So Van Jones is a Cut 50 organization, and I think Pete Buttigieg has also endorsed a similar 50% cut. Do you think that this will kind of become the ubiquitous position of the Democratic Party? And it's, I mean, it causes a lot of problems for Joe Biden. I sure hope so. Yeah. Uh, I hope that it's the case that everybody is taking a look at their criminal justice positions, is being honest about the racism inherent in our criminal justice system, mm -hmm. and saying things that help voters understand who they will be. I know for Bernie Sanders, he just recently hired Philip Agnew, who, do, who did a lot of activist work in Florida mm. on criminal justice issues. And I see, I'm happy to see that that work and those conversations have shown up in his campaign. And so I think it'd be a good idea for everybody to be talking to is activists. Agnew, is he Dream Defenders? Philip Agnew of the yeah. Dream Defenders, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have a little bit of Senator Sanders talking about his new criminal justice plan. Let's take a listen. We're going to ask why it is that we have more people in jail in America than any other country on earth, disproportionately African American. We are going to end the absurdity of 400,000 people in America today who are in jail. Do you know why 400,000 people are in jail today? Because they're too poor to find and pay for cash bail. In other words, we have a debtor's prison. Marissa, this is really one of those things that has become a bipartisan. I, I, what I think, the only candidate who this works against right now is Joe Biden because of the 1994 crime bill. We have Bernie Sanders, you have other supporters, uh, other Democratic candidates, they're coming out very hard for even more aggressive criminal justice reform. President Trump has passed the First Step Act. It's Joe Biden who has to deal with the legacy of the crime bill. I mean, that is where the juxtaposition would really put him in a tough space in, in a potential general election. Correct, and, yeah. I, and I certainly have my disagreements um, with Sanders putting mm -hmm. forth this criminal justice reform bill. My biggest issue on this is uh, legalizing safe injection uh, safe injection sites. Yeah, right. um, it's a very debatable topic um, in Massachusetts. Um, mm -hmm. The Senate House Ways and Means Committee passed um, uh, passed a bill that was able to you know further pour, you know put these type of safe mm -hmm. um, uh, injection sites. I think they're a little controversial, um, and you know I. I 
I'm not. The evidence not, on this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The evidence um, on this is quite mixed. I'm not sure about that. In yeah. Indiana, Mike Pence was very resistant to having safe injection sites, and they had massive outbreak of you know easily preventable communicable um, diseases. So this is something that is considered best practices. I think we need to have a broader discussion about war on drugs in general and right. how it has been a failed policy for literally like a century in this country. But let's put that one aside for another day. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Kanisha, this criminal justice reform is about what's right. right. Um, it's also about political power though, because if you lock someone up, they can't vote. Right. They can't exercise their franchise. And so with the number of people who have had, the number of black and brown men in particular have interactions with our criminal justice system and are stripped of their rights to vote, this is also about disenfranchisement and it's about political power. Absolutely, and I think that Florida is a great place to think about that. You all know I'm from Florida yeah. and think about that often. And so if it's the case that it's not about political power, when we have something like an amendment for pass in Florida where the citizens say we want to have it be the case that the folks in our state who are returning citizens can vote who are actually more white than not white in that state yeah and you see the Republican Party in that state working very hard to go against the will of the voters to change amendment four and to say that these people can't vote it has to be right. about political power it can't be about redemption because we're supposed to have a system that sends people into a jail or a prison and brings them back somewhere kind of near whole or we're supposed to be making them whole in the process of their return to uh, society, but it can be the case that we want to make them good citizens, we want to make them whole, we want to make them participants, and then we strip their right to vote. Yeah, the, yeah I mean, the whole idea is that they've paid their debt to society. Marissa, so. quick thought before we take a break. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I think criminal justice re reform absolutely needs to be a bigger and broader topic. Um, but if you look at state by state, I can speak to California. When you're having somebody who's, you know, a third repeat offender, you know, have you in theory paid your debt to society? I don't know because mm -hmm. I don't know every single criminal's, you know, exact background and what they've done. Mm -hmm. All right, ladies, stick with us. We're going to have more with Team Rising just after this.